Thank you very much. We are uh, $1.4 million is a significant savings to our city. All right, we're going to move on to item nine. This is city manager reports and requests for commission consideration. 9A is discussion and action on future financing options for city capital improvements. Mr. Okay, this, this has two parts to it. Um, the first part, of course, is proceed with financing for the infrastructure. It's, uh, this is in your packet. I'm reading this for the audience. Uh, proceed with financing for city infrastructure improvements and an animal shelter by issuance of certificate of obligations in the maximum amount of $2.2 million. The second option is defer the financing of the animal shelter pending the results of a future bond election, which we cannot call until August 18th, and proceed with financing only for infrastructure improvements and inch issuance of certificates of obligation in the minimum amount, maximum amount of $1.5 million. So that kind of spells out what we intend to do. So, I'd like, it, to, I'd like to speak to the, uh, to the bonds of obligation for the animal shelter Jeff, if, it's, come on. if it's time. I'm sorry, ma'am. I was getting ready to speak uh, for the uh, certificates of obligation for the whole package if it's time. If yes, ma'am. Um, Chairman, members of the commission, Jeff Golbus with McCall Parkers for Bond Council of the City. This is the opportunity. This is going to dovetail into the next agenda item. I have two different resolutions. One is going to go in the trash after this item. The other one presumably will be adopted. The two resolutions uh, which will be taken up next, as Jack stated, is proceeding with uh, the issuance of COs including the animal shelter or not with the animal shelter just for the infrastructure for general um, you know the municipal owned facilities that are described in it so um, we're here to entertain any questions the Commission has um, CEOs vis-a-vis -vis bonds bond election process experiences we have um, what we would need is is action taken to give guidance on the next agenda item that the Commission is going to say we're going to come back in the future and put a bond election before the voters or we're going to move forward with the issuance of COs at this time so it's as Jack stated um, pending y'all's discussion the outcome of this item will impact the next agenda item yeah. all right so then I would I would like to speak for the uh, certificates of obligation I want to begin with a map that I don't know if you all have this is a map of the animal calls that the uh, city of Marshall has faced in the last year. And the reason I bring it up is this. It sounds as though we're talking about an animal shelter for fuzzy animals, and we're not. We're talking about a health and safety issue for animals and people in the city of Marshall. Uh, we met uh, this week with uh, members of SWEPCO who pointed out that the biggest danger that meter readers face is animals that bite them. And all of those issues are directly retired, uh, uh, a part of the consideration of the animal shelter. So six months ago, I volunteered to head a committee and I have been incredibly impressed with their work. They included staff members, a veterinarian, animal rights, uh, uh, friends of animals, and in six months we cobbled together the needs that the city perceived of from the, the, the needs, these needs, to fuzzy animal needs, and our conclusion after all of those hours of work is that the certificates of obligation is the only way to go. And then, a week before this consideration comes up, we have an announcement that pursuant to certificates of obligation, we have three gentlemen who are willing to head up a $250,000 fundraising to complete the animal shelter in addition to funds that we have already raised to, com to complete the animal shelter. So uh, if I sound passionate about certificates of obligation, for the whole package, I am, because in addition to the animal shelter, because of what has happened in the last six weeks, six months, we may be able to go further than the 14 
vital areas that we've got for infrastructure improvements uh, on this certificate of obligation list. So uh, to get the discussion open, I would like to move that the City Commission adopt uh, certificates of obligation for the funding of both infrastructure and animal shelter improvements. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. That'd be option one, Mayor. That would be in favor Op of option one for the two point two million. Option yes, one sir. for the two point one CS. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll have some discussion still. All right, um, so we do have a motion, and uh, we're going to have any further discussion about this project. And you know everything. You know what a bond election is going <laughs> to entail. Uh, yes, sir. So um, you, you I... can you can you can answer every question. Uh, I, I should be close. We I handled eight in May alone, including some in y'all's area. So, um, yes, Mayor. I'm, Very good. So, any I'm question you have about a bond election or COs, we can uh, ask Mr. Golbus here. And I do have a few questions. Um, if anyone else would like to ask them first, you may. Hey, Jack, can you speak to the stipulations that the generous donors gave on their donation to the animal shelter? I wasn't aware of the stipulations of. Uh, if we go one way, they won't give it. If they go the other way, they will. Can you speak on that? I, I cannot. I did not speak to them. Uh, Ed Smith did. And okay. uh, I think Jerry Carl was involved in this also. I didn't want to leave him out. So uh, I did not speak to them. Ed did. So I, uh, I won't. Uh, Gail says she has. Okay. But I have not talked to Steve and about it. It is contingent on certificate of obligation. Um, my question is if we go with the certificate of obligation, um, Mr. Uh, Redmond, what will happen to the commission had allocated $200,000 yearly for our capital outlay? Will that cease if we do the op certificate of obligation? Oh. It will not cease in the first three years. You're going to, we're going to, we're backloading this certificate of obligation if we go with a 2.2. Uh, John was here a couple of meetings ago and we talked about this. Uh, we'll backload that until some of this other debt comes off, and then we'll, you know, it'll go to, you'll have about 117000 or $112,000 left in your, uh, your capital improvements fund. So but now remember, um, I just will make sure you're aware of everything. Remember, if we adopt either one of these options has your capital improvements in it, okay? One and two have that. So, um, Remember, you're going to take a pretty big bite out of your capital improvement problems, uh, you know, no matter which way you go. So I just want to make sure you know that. So you're saying if we go with the bond, or the, either, either or, we will lose the $200,000 or yeah, $100,000? You are going to lose the $200,000. You're going to have 112000 for the first three years. Then you'll lose, uh, you'll lose the, the, that money will go away in order to make the payments. But the, the one thing about it is in three years, we drop off a good bit of debt. And we also, uh, you know, we have growth in the community right now. We have more growth coming. So I'm not saying that you will absolutely lose it. But as it stands at this moment, you would lose it if it happened today. But we're not, we're not subtracting anything from our current street uh, funding or uh, uh, salaries or anything else with the certificates of obligation. Correct? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Absolutely not. No. The so streets and all that. Yes. We are. We yes. just go with certificates of obligation. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Jack, do you mind speaking on uh, debt a little bit? Um, maybe take increments 5, 10, 15 years. How much debt do we have compared to years past? I know we've got Memorial City Hall. Um, we do. We're buying ambulances. We're doing this with water. We're, I mean, there's always big ticket items. How in debt the, are we compared the, to The years biggest past? debt that we have is in JC's area. I okay. mean, it's just, that's just the nature of the beast. And, and you just saw a presentation on how far we can get into debt fixing all the problems, you know, that JC has, or the city has that JC takes care of. I think, I think that'd be a better way to put it. Uh, but but um, I don't think as far as debt goes, and, and you, John, if you disagree, you speak to this, I don't think as far as debt goes, the city of Marshall's in bad shape. This man takes care of us in that area. Uh, John, you want to speak to it and tell him? 
I can tell you that in terms of your tax supported debt, what you levy a tax for that everybody feels, right? Um, all the home, anybody that has any property that has to pay tax on, um, that debt, it, you are out of debt in nine years, in 2027. It goes away. So we just talked about as a result of the refunding, we're gonna, that debt will go away in 2021. So that is outstanding uh, by comparison to most cities, I don't care how big or small, you know, are borrowing for much longer periods of time. So you all in, in a, have in a relatively small amount of debt. I know it, all debt sounds big. It's all a lot of money anytime you're talking about debt, right? So nobody wants to have to do it. But it's the only way to get improvements done because of the fact that you have the ability to borrow it, tax exempt these low rates like we got from Chase and Amogee Bank. And those low rates are lower than the cost of inflation. So by the time you wait and save this money up, the cost of your project has gone More. dramatically in price. And when you say, oh gosh, we could have done this years ago at 2%, and now you're having to wait and it's the, the price has increased. So that is that is one thing that the federal government has not taken away from us in terms of the tax act and things like that is, is the ability to borrow on a tax exempt basis. Okay. So, but the bottom line is you're, you have very low debt in terms of what the, the taxpayers and Marshall pay, that all goes away in 2027 with no new debt, obviously, okay. as it stands right now, and then the utility related debt. And I want to point out too, I've mentioned to Jack, keep in mind that the savings you just received from that geo refunding, that is on the utility fund side. So that's on your enterprise fund. So that has nothing to do with the general fund, that has nothing to do with taxes or anything like that. That's all in the water rates, water and sewer rates. So just want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, we heard someone tonight say that our tax, property tax rate in the city was the highest in the area. That's not true, is it? No, it's not. No, we don't have the highest tax rates in the area. That's what no. I thought. No, we do not. Uh, I, you know, there's, there's cities that have done other things. You know, I, I hear Tyler a whole lot in, in all these discussions, which is a city three times our size or four times our size almost. And, uh, the one thing they don't do, they don't have a, um, a Medco, okay? They don't have a, somebody to go out and, and, and try to get industry into the city. So they don't have that arm. And, and I think personally, I, I think that, you, that that arm is important, I, you know, to, some, to a big degree in Marshall, of course. But Tyler's grown to a point where I, I think they feel like that they just don't need it. I mean, they had a mayor come in and, and uh, more or less obliterate it and took the money back into the city. And of course, you don't have to raise taxes if you take all the money away from industrial development. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's kind of a win-lose deal if you, or a win-win deal, however you want to look at it. I, I, I don't feel that way about our, our, uh, our Medco. I do not feel that way. I, I think they are an important part in, of this city and a, and a building block for this city. So. Um, I don't suggest that, and I don't think Mayor Herter would suggest that either from talking with him. He has. Well, you know, I just, someone had just made this observation about high property taxes in the city. That's we do, no, we don't, we don't have the highest property taxes in there, you know. Well, as Mr. Martin stated, you know, no one wants to go into debt. I mean, you don't want to go into debt personally. You hate to see the city go into debt, but we have capital and improvements that need to be done and we cannot pay as we go. I mean, it's just, it doesn't work that way. I would say that by, by the rate of inflation, by the time you bought, you borrowed it now and did the, the project or whatever way y'all decide to borrow it, uh, <clears throat> the inflation of the project would outrun the interest you pay. So, you know, I think we do that every day in our personal lives, you know, exactly. with cars and things like that. I was talking with John Flowers uh, regarding the animal shelter, and he said the price of steel out at the mall has gone up 33% since they began working on the mall. So and that's a six weeks project and 33%. The price of steel at Memorial City Hall, you'll be seeing a change order on it. It went up significantly. We hadn't received the change order yet, but I know it's coming. I know that we're going to have to pay. But fortunately, we bought a lot of our steel before that happened. So it's going to affect us a lot less than it does the mall area. Um, I have some specific bond questions. Uh, um, got the man to answer. Yes. Um, we hope. Yes. Now, on the actual, the bond document, which we have, um, and I guess that would be, I'm trying to find what exact page it's on for us, but there's a description. Oh, okay, here it is. I'm on the page. It's 119 in our particular packet and uh, page 115. Um, so when we list these 
things out. We're looking to take this deferred maintenance and basically do these improvements. Um, and it says it's a laundry list. Right. Uh, City Hall, City Arena, City Annex, Visual Arts Center, Convention Center, Police Department, Water Utilities, City Park, Airport Park, Oak Lawn. Now, we're going to realize some savings on some of these projects. We're going to potentially want to put some more money into different projects. Um, we may not spend as much on an elevator, so we may have some funds available. How specific do we have to be? Do we need to list out every potential project that this money is going to be used for or not? No, sir. That's a great question. Uh, Jackie Lane and, and I discussed that. We have to list projects. You have to spend at least a dollar on each one since we've noticed that that's what's going to be improved upon. So if it's on. listed, there must be an a, a spending allocation towards that project. At least a dollar. Yes, sir. But to your point, you're exactly right. If you come in less on the airport park, and you're under budget, you can move those savings over to the convention center. Okay, and that's good because I know some of us haven't, we have quite locked down whether you know, the driving range is gonna receive you know, $35,000. So if that doesn't happen, if there's another project that actually is a higher priority in the commission's estimation, we can move that money Absolutely. that direction. That's very good to know. Um, and then also I've heard a few times, I guess continually now, that uh, we went to approve a scheme U, and some of this is a municipal question, and as well as a probably a financial or a straight state question. Um, let's say this does go to a bond. Scheme, scheme U goes to a bond. It does, let's say it doesn't pass. If it passes, it doesn't pass. If it does not pass, we cannot offer. We cannot. Uh, we cannot go out for certificate of obligation for scheme U. Correct. Three years. For for. You said for certificates of obligation? Right. right. So if that so, bond doesn't pass, you, could, you, you can't put it back up for bond is it for three years, or you could go out for It's a good question. Let me I'll, I'll clarify that. So let's say we put the shelter up for a vote. This is a new change in law we got in 20, the 2015 legislative okay. session. If it fails, you cannot issue COs for it for a period of three years. Okay. You can certainly put it continually put it back to the voters, um, you know, with that okay. time and expense if you like. But again, every time it fails, you're locked out for COs for a three-year period. Okay. And that CO is only on that plan. So let's say plan you didn't pass in a bond, and uh, we decide to construct a smaller shelter. No, sir. Um, if excellent question. If it's an animal shelter, which is what would be put to the voters, it would have a maximum dollar amount of this is the max we could spend on it, and it would be an animal shelter. If that fails, you can't change the plans, you can't downsize it, and try to circumvent that restriction. You cannot issue COs for a shelter that houses animals for three years at all. E e at all, even if it's a different wow. part of the city, different layout, different plans. As I told Jack, I'm not trying to be flippant, but if it's a shelter that houses animals, you can issue COs for That's it. That's a significant piece of information. So our city could not take out a CO at all. We would have to have cash in hand to build a shelter. That's correct, for three years. Okay. And let's say you went out for a bond. Would we have cash in hand to build a more modest shelter? It looks, we got the 352. We have 210 for this year. So we would be at what, five, five sixty. We would have a hundred. Well, it depends on what happens. We would have to build that with cash. Yes. Okay. And uh, so that does have an impact. See, I thought if the plan modified, we would be able to still able to. go out for a CO. Can't do anything. But right with that new law we got in 2015. Yes, and unfortunately uh, that. Well, yeah, it's. Um, and I could it's, see, it's a major impact. I could see a, a city trying to circumvent that and modifying some 2% and just doing whatever they want to anyway when the voters have spoken. So I'm sure there's been atrocities there. there but, uh, okay, that's a, great, uh, that's a great information to know. All right, before I ask a few other questions or have a few statements, anybody else have any questions or statements? I do. I have one other thing. Um, I need to, to get some clarification for the public. With the bond, and if it pass, the tax that's that's they have to the tax will go up, correct? Wait, the citizens would have to pay for the bond, is what I'm saying, right? Well, the citizens are going to have to pay for COs or right. bond. Right, I'm going to get same, to that one. Yes, and they're both bonds. Right. Yeah. Okay, but it's a, a voters get. The only difference is with a certificate of obligation, the citizen doesn't have a vote. 
is that correct, is the commissioners for the CO. Yeah. But for a bond, the citizens have a voice to vote whether they want it or not. Isn't that, is that true? This is true. That's true. Okay. So one, the citizens have a voice whether they want it. Maybe they do. Uh, they can say, no, I don't want it. But with a certificate of obligation, they have no say. But it's still, they are the one that's still paying for the certificate of obligation through the budget. But yes, isn't there a difference? Is, in that, the, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that is. Isn't okay. there a difference in the way you pay a bond issue immediately goes on the tax roll? Uh, no, ma'am, they're, they're both, they're really the same instrument. It's, they're going to have, bear the same interest rates. It's going to have the same credit quality. Um, they can have the same maximum maturity that is set at the discretion of the commission. Um, uh, so really, while they have different names, it's really the legal process by which you go about issuing them. But I think what Commissioner Beale is, is referring to is that with a bond uh, that we're talking about for an election, then whatever tax rate that is associated with that is a separate tax rate that would show up on their property bill for that specific bond, it as would, opposed to the certificate of obligation being paid for out of the general revenues. It would be included uh, in the interest in sinking fund component when y'all go through your budget and tax rated option process. So yes. Yes. But Jack, I've got a quick question. I don't want to digress too much, but can you take me back in time to when we passed the parks bond and how much was that for? It was over 700,000. I believe it was 785. Okay. Um, now how did that work out? And what year was that? 2008. I'm, I'm close. Uh, let me say 2008. So we went to a bond election. You can beat me if I'm off a year or two. We went to a bond election for an item, a third of this amount, roughly, um, or half, whatever. Yeah, around and half of this amount. So how is, how is that bond election idea different than this one? Why, why, how come we would do it then and not now? Well, it was just actually the commission at the time decided that we had two other. Now, a parks bond's different than, than okay. a police fire. Please. Police fire was on one bond. The parks had to be on a bond by itself. Okay. So we uh, went for election, and actually all three passed. Of course, you have the, you mm -hmm. know, you see that now. But uh, the parks bond did pass. It didn't pass by the overwhelming majority that the police fire did, but it did pass. So why didn't we just go for a CO for the parks money? Uh, at the time, uh, it was the choice of the commission. Okay. So it did pass. It and did, did pass. Get yes, sir. It, it passed. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. I'm just curious, whatever year that was, the commission, it worked out. It, it did work and out. And I, I mean, the voters got to decide. Well, let me tell you, and, and Ed, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We had just went through a pretty rough period. I think in 2007, we went through a pretty, pretty rough period. Uh, things kind of fell apart. I think everybody mm -hmm. remembers that in 07. And then in 08, am I, I'm sorry, Todd, am I going too far off? Okay. Well, in, anyway, in 08, we weren't as cash flush, so it was about the only way to attain that okay. parks improvements and the police fire uh, also. Okay. But you needed the tax increase then. Uh, yeah, that, what? Uh, Mr. Redmond, if you have a question, could you ask the attorney and not Mr. Smith? Uh, yeah, well, I was, I'm sorry, I was actually asking Mr. Smith because he was mayor at the time, I'm sorry. Um, we had, we had to get a tax increase to pay for any of those, you know, all those had to be, come through a tax increase. We didn't have the money in the city to pay for those, okay. uh, the parks and the police and fire, to, to make that payment on a CO. Okay. To, and to follow up on the question about voter or public comment, another issue with the, with the CO, I mean, it's being missed here. There, there is a protest period yeah. just built into the statute. And uh, once, I mean, tonight, all that's going to happen is that you are going to authorize to go ahead and put to the publication. The official action comes in July, the way we've got the calendar set up. There's a period where, where the uh, voters and people can protest. And, uh, and, that's, and that's been lowered uh, down to 5%, and that's going to apply to this, this CO. So that's important to note, too. It's not just something that is, is done. There, over the years, COs have been kind of pulled back down and uh, they'll have over a 30-day period
to uh, and under the statute, it's five percent of the of the re registered voters, which uh, I believe is going to be about five hundred eighty-three people. So we're at about eleven yeah, eleven thousand six hundred forty-one. Is five percent of the registered voters uh, right now. So uh, that just want to put that out there that this is not. There is still a process in there. It's not just automatically called a vote, but it would have to be citizen. So this isn't just a behind the you know yeah. curtain decision or whatever. That process is in place and it will go into effect. So just want to make sure that's out there. So to rephrase, any CO that the city decides to approve has a chance to be protested well there's some exceptions but okay. this is this isn't one of them they're usually emergency okay. cl public calamities things uh, like that under this but 580 people could sign a petition and then that would go to and, where yeah no quote quote me on the file okay, and it may be but it could be a little <laughs> bit higher or lower but yeah then, then you would have to call an election put it to a put it and to you a would vote. call that to a bond election a bond election or a CO election? We well, actually put it to a CO election. Okay, so it would be an election for the approval of the CO that correct. was approved by the commission. That's correct. Right. And that would go to a public vote. In the, okay. of course, before us, we have only two choices. One is to call COs for animal shelter and the other improvements all together. So that would kill, they, sure. they can't separate those out to vote for one or the other. So just, it would be, uh, if that's approved tonight, that resolution, then it will be, you know, and again, I don't know if there'll be a protest, but it would be to call for a vote. If there's uh, those signatures, over five, the 500 signatures that, that uh, signed that petition, then we'll have to verify those and, you know, we'd have to address that issue. So and that, how, that, Go ahead. I'm, that's a I'm bit sorry. of a nuance. Yeah. How long would you have to have that petition? When does it start and when does it? Uh, you have to have well, that there's a notice requirement that is at least 30 days, but under our timeline it's going to be over July uh, 26. Yeah, so it, I mean July, July 26. 26th in the posting is set for hopefully this weekend Th that'll occur uh, next week. So and it has to be uh, city registered voters. Correct. Correct. Okay. We'd have to verify those and all that, but that that there is a process and the legislature it's been hot item over the so last few sessions but and just for the there. just for the point of kind of nuance because this is I mean there's rules and regulations on right. how we so let's say the 2.2 million was approved there was a protest of 580 600 votes um, it went to a CO election let's say that let's say it failed no COs for three years <laughs> no COs on any infrastructure improvements uh, actually if if the petition it would cover everything listed in the 2.2 so we could not do any improvements on unless any we of the separate unless you broke those out as two separate pieces which yeah. that's correct and then again you're relying on a citizen to understand the petition process well enough to separate them because we have seen multiple projects lumped in where folks are in opposition to one of them and a petition is filed for the CEOs a court can't determine what that petition was speaking to, so it locks out all of the projects. So the petition could actually be towards one particular portion of that CO and not the entire? If, if it's drafted appropriately by the individual doing it, it's, it's a possibility. That's, that's interesting. Okay. Now, those are good things to know because, you know, we're voting on what's going to happen here this evening. Um, anyone have any? I do have a few statements and probably they'll build into some questions as well. Mr. Chairman, I have a statement also. Yes, sir. There has been quite a bit of discussion concerning the animal shelter, including the physical plan, the cost and financing, and the ability of city residents to have a voice in this process. Many people, including some commissioners, apparently want this to be placed on the ballot as a bond issue in order to let the citizens have their say. I believe that each citizen should have a voice in all decisions made by every government entity of which they are a part. This includes city, county, school and other districts, state and federal. In this country, every citizen does have this right. Unfortunately, many citizens routinely relinquish this right. Let me be, explain. In this country, we have a representative form of government 
This means that we elect people to represent us. The basis of this system is that the elected official has the time, ability, and willingness to investigate all aspects of an issue and will then vote in the best interest of the citizens she or he represents. On the issue of the animal shelter, the city commissioners have studied the state statutes that govern the city obligations regarding animal control, visited the current animal shelter, visited a new animal shelter, and studied the statistics concerning our city's animal shelter and more. Not many of the city's residents would conduct this research themselves, which is why we elect representatives, in this case, city commissioners. Each citizen's right to have a vote in this and every other decision is demonstrated when an election is held for a city commissioner. If the current commissioner is not representing the citizens appropriately, that commissioner should be voted out and replaced by someone who represents the citizens. When I stated earlier that many citizens routinely relinquish this right, I was referring to the pathetic turnout in our elections. In this same vein, if any city commissioner is unable or unwilling to make a decision, that commissioner should resign so that they may be replaced by someone who is willing and able to make decisions. Voting to put this decision on the ballot is a manifestation of an elected official being unwilling or unable to make a decision. For those who believe this should be placed on the ballot, I might ask, where was the outcry for a ballot on the funding for Memorial City Hall? If this is a financial consideration, do you want the city's budget on a ballot for city approval, for citizen approval? If the concern is not financial, do you want the selection of our next city manager on a ballot? The selection of the individual to fill this position will have a much greater impact on our great city. As you ponder these questions, I will remind you that the Commission is considering the formation of a new city charter. Perhaps some of you would like to serve on that Commission. My position is and has been that we need a new animal shelter. I voted to approve Plan U, even though I have some reservations about that plan. The Certificate of Obligation, designed by Mr. Redmond, would allow us to fund the animal shelter and another 14 project that have been deemed the highest priority by city staff without increasing taxes. By definition, the bond would raise taxes. I will vote for the CO. Thank you. Um, Chairman Herder, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Commissioner Holliday, for that statement. But citizens do vote for us to be here to, to voice, to be their voice. I had, I have constituents and citizens as well coming to me saying they want a voice for the animal shelter. It's not that we can't do it, but if the citizen asks for a voice, I don't see why we couldn't do that. It's not that we can't do our job. No, we shouldn't have citizens vote for a, a, a city manager and this, that, and the other. No, that's ludicrous. No. But if the citizens ask for a vote, a voice, in this matter, I think we should abide by that, give them that opportunity to vote. I didn't hear that saying when we voted for new schools, why didn't the trustees decide what they wanted to do with a certificate of obligation or something? But it was a bond, and the citizens voted, and they have that right. Who are we to say, no, we don't want them to have that decision? If they ask for that, we should at least accommodate them. And if this, this commission vote for uh, a majority for a CO, then the citizens have a right to sign a petition to, to mandatory take it to a, to a bond. So for that, I will vote for a bond election. And I hope you can uh, agree to disagree. And I thank you for your input, and I hope you thank me for mine. Yes, thank you. 
It doesn't. Uh, uh, this is comment. just we for have, discussion. We have two motions. Mm -hmm. We are. Okay, so we I understand. Okay. okay. Um, all right. I'm going to make a few statements, and I'm going to base these off of our animal shelter numbers. I voted to approve Scheme U. We're going to build a new animal shelter in the city. I'm going to vote on a new animal shelter. When we put this forward to this committee, it was under the auspices they, they wanted to build a low-kill, no-kill facility. That, they came up with Scheme U. It's a great design. Hopefully it's going to be very cost effective for what it is and what it can do. Um, so the problem isn't necessarily that we need a new animal shelter. Of course we do. Scheme P seemed insu insufficient, of course, to me. When I look at our 2017 numbers, Scheme U is designed off a of 51 percent capacity from county animals. So 1,090 animals came in from our county to the City of Marshall Animal Shelter and the City of Marshall taxpayer funded for either the adoption, the care, or the euthanization of those animals. So currently our county gives $39,000 a year towards our maintenance and operation. So Scheme U is designed to take care of our county animals when we really need to bring in a better contract with our county. If we're going to build a Harrison County animal shelter, Scheme U is perfect. I want to, uh, first, I want to applaud the Friends of the Marshall Animal Shelter. I, I, when I looked at these numbers, and I was told these numbers last year were not good, and I got the final numbers. And I'm hearing we have an 80% euthanasia rate. That is not accurate. We're at 54%. And every animal that came in from our city, 980 or whatever, we had 980 adoptions. 100% of what our city brought into the shelter and our city residents, and were through pickups, were actually adopted out to homes, which would mean the city of Marshall, and I can't designate those dogs, our current shelter if we operated the same exact way and only took city animals, we would be a low-kill, no-kill shelter potentially. And so I want to build a shelter. I thought Scheme U would get more financial backing. $250,000 is a great start. But when I look at our budget and our deferred maintenance in our city, you know, there's probably a number that crawls towards, and you know, I hate to even say this because this isn't my money. But this is, if, if this is a passionate part of a group of our citizenry that want to see our city move forward in this area. I think there's a number that sits maybe at 400,000 where our city takes up part of that extra burden and a group comes in and says, hey, we need this. The 250 starting to approach that, I don't see that personally. Um, I would like to see more money allocated towards Scheme U for our city to adopt that scheme and then if we adopt Scheme U and we decide to fund Scheme U, that we talk with our county and we start working out a reasonable agreement like Mount Pleasant has done. Mount Pleasant contracted with two cities. They have a specific amount getting paid by those cities. They have a certain number of dog drops per year to their shelter, their city shelter, from those cities. Once that's met, there's no more animals received from that city. Longview, Texas, we're looking at their shelter. They built a $6 million shelter, but they have two contracts through two other counties. We have a contract with our county. We know it's not adequate. It's at $35 per animal received. Who's taking up the rest of the $140, $150? When you bring an animal to the Longview shelter, it's based on, I think, $140 to $170. I've seen figures from all over. I don't know which one it is. Our city taxpayers picking up $100 per animal brought in. Friends of the Marshall Animal Shelter, y'all have done an unbelievable job and transformed our city. I mean, we're at 54% euthanasia rate. I don't want to see it at 54%. I want to see it much lower. I want to see us build a shelter that's going to lower this number. But Scheme U is based upon another entity bringing dogs to us. So I have a couple of questions. And that's why Scheme U is a, a modification of how we've handled animals in our city. And it is under the direct auspices that we're going to be taking care of all the county animals, no matter what they bring in. 
That's not a good contract. That's not what's fair to our citizens. If we're going to go low kill, no kill, and have a Harrison County shelter, we need to work out a good agreement with our county. And, or we need to have a group that says, look, I know maintenance and operations are going to be higher. We're going to walk this down as low as it is financially feasible for your city so we can get and take care of as many deferred maintenance projects as we have in our city. We have plenty of some out. I'm glad we're taking care of all these. We have plenty. And we have water and sewer to start working at. We have other things to discuss. Now, the only caveat right now is if I put this to a bond, you're telling me we can't build a more modest shelter. I would like to see us build a more modest shelter that meets our city needs versus our county needs. So maybe you can address how yes, I can sure. solve that problem. Yes. Uh, great point, Mayor. Tonight, you don't have the ability to um, actually call the bond election. This decision is really, as I said, we're going to issue move forward with 1.5 or 2.2 in COs. Jack mentioned we have a, about a two to three week window in the month of August by which a city can legally call the election. So you have between now and that three week window in August to determine exactly how much, if you're going to put it to a vote, how much money you're going to ask the voters to approve. At that meeting in August at which the commission would or would not call the election, that document which we prepare will state the dollar amount and you cannot exceed that. If the voters approve it, that's your cap. Okay. And that's the cap on the whole CO, correct? O on that bond, correct. Okay. Now, for that particular project, let's say it's at 1.4 million right now, 1.3, 1.2, you know, and we have general numbers. Right. But we've seen projects in our city climb 10%, 15%. Sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we start walking into it. We can fix the whole city arena for 10% right. of that money. We can fix everything going on at Airport Park and address 3,000 people a week or how many are out there for 10% increase. So, you know, there has to be some place where you set caps on particular projects. To me, this is a disproportionate amount. 54% of this funding of this CO is going towards one building, and that's an animal shelter, based upon the capacity of our county, not based upon the capacity of our city. And so, and I know I'm talking political there, so I have, I think we could build a shelter here that meets the needs of our county. I would like to work out the proper agreements. So how can, can we structure this? You know, if I say, hey, we're going to go out for a CO for our animal shelter, let's say. Can I propose a more modest shelter? How long would I have to propose a more, more modest shelter? And I could give another group to me. This is just me. This is my conscience. Another group saying, I'm going to need to be in this range for our city to build this type of a shelter. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put a number on that. And I would do that for my home. I would do that for my family. I would do that for anything. And I say, this is probably worth it. Here, it's not fair for our taxpayer. And right now, I don't see this being fair to our taxpayer, period. So how could, I, what could happen there? What, Can I have just a statement, just one second? Yes, we had the opportunity to vote for a more modest animal shelter. Uh, it, was, it was disproportionately It was scheme P gross. and scheme U. We had two schemes to vote on, and we as a commission chose to vote for Scheme U because we as a commission said Scheme P, the modest one, was not what we needed. It was not moving our city forward. I believe those were the exact words that were said. So, I mean, we're beating a dead horse. Are we? Now, I think there's a big difference between a 2,300 square foot house and a 4,500 or 5,000 square foot house. But we've already voted to and go with Scheme U. We, we voted to not go with the more modest shelter. And I so voted. why are we continually discussing this? I mean, but I understand. I just brought up the reasons. Well, it was a 43. Do not say this commission, say the majority of the commission. So it was not all of us. Well, it was a quorum, it, and it passed. Yes. But, I mean, you know, I'm... I'm I'm with Commissioner here. It sounds like to me we're backstepping. We had a decision to make tonight. Why are we backtracking? We either make this vote and decide which way we're going to go, or we don't. We have the options. I think we need to get to the options and make the vote. Because what I, everything else I hear is going back. Yeah, that should have been brought up two weeks ago. And we ago. have bypassed that. Well, let's just go ahead and vote, and then if the majority sells CO, then we have the opportunity to do a petition. So Correct. Let's, let's go ahead let's, and do let's, that. Let's, 
That's true. But all that other we're talking about, we thank you. We've worn that out. Now, and my last my last question: If we go to a CO and it gets voted on tonight to go to a CO, can we structure that CO so that if it does get petitioned, that it wouldn't pull away all the desperately needed deferred maintenance we have in other areas of our city or no? Um, you could. What I would ask is for, um, we, w we would split up the notice to clarify that. Um, this is getting a little bit in the weeds here because uh, you have a combined notice. So if that's the direction of the commission, I need um, approval to uh, split the notice into the two separate projects and we'll have a notice of intent to issue COs for an animal shelter and we'll have a notice of intent to issue COs for municipal infrastructure. Each one of those notices is going to have to have a separate dollar amount. So we're talking 1.5 for the infrastructure with the delta between 2.2 1.5 going to the animal shelter. Okay. Mr. And, Mayor, and that's like a, thank we, you. What, we I'm have a motion and a second on, 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 on here that we on should vote on for the 2.2. And mm -hmm. I think we should vote on it. I understand. I and and there, are a few, there are a few extra moving parts that I found out from Mr. Golbus that I didn't know about yet. So, uh, I understand, but there's a motion and a second. And we haven't even, we've, it's dead on the and, floor. And we always have discussion, and we'll continue to have discussion, Ooh. because that's when everybody gets their voice. That's right. Everyone. And there's only seven people to talk, so everybody's going to speak. Thank you. All right, so we do have, does anyone have any further? I move for you. So, I, I, my last question separating the animal shelter and the infrastructure. We can do that. If we do a bond, can we list it for the animal shelter, for the voters, and also the infrastructure and certificate of obligation? Can we separate it or does it have well, to be both that, uh, I, together? I, I think there's some confusion. Um, we're only talking about, as my understanding, is a potential submission of a bond to the voters is only for the animal shelter. Mm -hmm. So if that's y'all's direction, we would, the commission would be asked to approve the resolution to move forward with the COs only for the municipal infrastructure. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank All right. you. All right, I'm going to pull back up my proper page and I'll. Can somebody give me the page where the actual vote's on in our packet? Page 104. Um, where it's listed out and spelled out one five. and two? Yeah, it's random. It's one. Uh, on the two options. Okay. 105. 105. I think I think it's 105. I think I'm winning. Yes, 105. Oh, page 105 specific. My, my motion is to complete. 105. All right. So we have a motion for option one to proceed with financing the city infrastructure improvements and an animal shelter by the issuance of certificates of obligation in the maximum amount of $2,200. And then, 2. 2. 2. 2. I mean, $2.2 2. 2 million, sorry. Yeah. $2,200,000, period. And then uh, item two, which is not being voted on currently, is defer the financing of an animal shelter pending the results of a future bond election and proceed with financing only city infrastructure improvements by the issuance of certificates of obligation in the maximum amount of $1,500. But if we vote for one, we can't vote for two. I understand. So we're voting on one, but option two is there. Okay. All right. All those in favor of moving with option one? Aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed? Nay. 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 Uh -huh. um, the motion has passed. The city will be moving with option one for $2.2 million improvements to an animal shelter and issuance of certificates of obligation in the maximum amount of $2.2 million. All right, we are moving towards item 9B, <laughs> which we're still here. This is a resolution. Consider an act upon a resolution directing publication of notice of intention to issue combination tax and revenue certificates of obligation, Mr. Redmond. You have, um, of course, you voted for the 2.2, or, or the commission has adopted the 2.2, and we're providing two versions of the resolutions. These are identical except with one, 
it's the animal shelter the other. Without the animal shelter, you have, the commission has opted for the 2.2. I need a resolution you to vote on the resolution for the $2.2 million. Can I address? Yes, Absolutely. please. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to get us into the weeds here a little bit based on our prior discussion. Um, the commission needs to determine based on what y'all have heard, uh, whether you want to risk your 1.5 million in municipal infrastructure being taken down by the potential of a petition. Yes. A petition submitted is going to kill all that infrastructure for a three-year period. Um, right. Well, you, you have to submit it to an election subject to our discussion we had. So it, we, we've agreed on 2.2. We're going to include the animal shelter. I would ask the commission to determine my recommendation would be that we split the notices up as I described earlier. So what we will move forward with, I'll work with Ms. Altman. We will publish in the newspaper uh, notice to issue 1.5 million in um, certificates of obligation for the infrastructure that's described. We would publish a second notice um, for 700,000 for the animal shelter. I make a motion that we keep it combined at 2.2 million with everything together. Second the motion. Second. Oh, second. Okay, we have a motion to keep those combined at 2.2 million. So if there is a petition, our infrastructure improvements are in potential jeopardy. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's the motion on the table. And a second, that was Commissioner Holliday, Commissioner Beal. And uh, do we have any discussion? Yeah, can you tell me what the downside is of splitting them up? What's the downside? Uh, uh, you may incur another $50 in publication costs. So for $50, we could secure that the infrastructure needs are met no matter what, unless they petition that too. That's correct. Um, that's going to keep your infrastructure dreams alive for mm -hmm. just, again, publishing a second notice in the, in the news messenger. Um, you still, for full clarification, are subject these are yeah. citizen oriented and if they don't word it correctly definitely you know, we can't determine which project they're mm -hmm. petitioning yeah but it's going to improve your odds immensely that you're at least going to get your infrastructure okay are there are there additional financing cost for separating the two no we would issue assuming we don't have a petition we would do one series of COs for both projects if the um, Let's say the animal shelter does have a successful petition, but the infrastructure doesn't. We would come back in July 26 and sell 1.5 million in COs for the infrastructure. We would be back here in August. Um, you would, if, if you do get petitioned, it is a requirement to submit it to the election. It's no longer optional. Okay. So for $50, we can take. I, I'm, I'm spitballing based yeah. on my recommendation. A controversial. My, how much the news messenger charges to publish. Yeah, it may be 250 You know, it's that's going right. to be under $200 probably. Yeah. So, but we have a motion and a second to keep those combined right now. Okay. Yes, sir. So we're going to vote. Um, I'm going to ask that be modified. <laughs> can we modify a motion or can I not once it's been approved? All right, we've got a motion and well, approved. I have, of course, like it withdrawn and to do the opposite. But, I just uh, need to get some clarification. Um, if, if we keep them together and we do get a petition and it forced it to a vote, we can't get another certificate of ob obligation for infrastructure. I don't want to put our infrastructure online, and that's why I would like for it to be separate. To answer your question, based on the motion, all of the infrastructure listed, the annex, city hall, visual arts center, convention center, police, water utility, city park, airport park, Oak Lawn driving range, and Lions community center, yes, you would not be able to move forward. And I do not want to lose that because we do need to address our infrastructure. So in order to do that, if it does go to the, to the uh, voters and it fail, if we keep it together, we can't get money, uh, funds for our infrastructure or an animal shelter. So I like to keep it separate to, to cover our infrastructure for our city. I mean, and it only, it would only cost, what, 50, around $50? Well, what, whatever the newspaper Those charges the, the most. Newspaper. It's, it's not All right, any further discussion on this no. or statements? 
So we have elected officials that are willing to take a controversial item, leave that grouped in with critical deferred maintenance improvements. I'm just wanting to make that clear. And they're willing to vote yes on keeping those grouped together so that someone that may have the ability to go through a political process with a petition rightfully by the state would actually be chopping off their leg, per se, of deferred maintenance that's critical in our city. Okay. But you could also say that a voter could be against any of those improvements Absolutely. and vote it down, correct? If someone was against us improving uh, the baseball field or the arena, if there was people against us putting money into that, couldn't they also? I mean, that could be voted down because of that. Is that correct or not? It, it, the answer to question is yes. Um, I would say, I, in my experience, that typically doesn't happen on more general municipal type needs. Um, but theoretically, you, you, yeah, I mean, it's. But then it's the flip possible. side would happen that the animal shelter would be protected from that person who hated the airport park. If it was something that they were just dead set against, whether it's the animal shelter improvements to whatever capital improvements we had listed, it could be detrimental either way. It probably wouldn't be, but it's a possibility. But if you had somebody who absolutely hated Airport Park and they got 700 voters, the animal shelter would be protected from that group. So the animal shelter still could be funded. If you got people, if it's both together and, and, and the airport park people said, no, 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 and then the animal shelter fails too. So it really protects both parties. If it's together. You know, by splitting it. It protects the huge ticket item and small ticket items. So You also have an opportunity to pay cash. Sure. And that is true. If, if, if a petition was raised and it was successful, we'll say against the animal shelter and, and the bond and the uh, 14 projects. If that was successful, you still have cash available. Yeah, but the reason we're going to a certificate obligation is because we don't have the cash available. So. Well, we, we have some cash. Some cash, but we can't get uh, the So of it's projects. a question of how much we have and how much we'd be willing to spend on which particular projects. And as long as we clearly know what we're voting on, is everybody good with this? All right, we have a motion to approve a, the combined certificate without splitting those. And uh, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. 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 And was that four, four? One, two. It's Commissioner Holliday. Commissioner I'm Brown. four. Commissioner Moon, you were four. four. And Commissioner Beal was four. Okay. So four, three, it has been voted. You're going to, if you could put those combined for us, please. Thank you. <laughs>